joy and welcome to my youtube channel i am an actress writer and founder of blue room productions i post vlogs behind the scenes commentary on my projects and my films but before this video is over make sure you hit the like subscribe and the bell button to stay up to date so in today's video i am talking part two of my filmmaking experience in south africa if you have not already watched part one go ahead and click the link in my description box below or the card above and it'll take you to the first part of this video i produced a second project called jiggy jiggy a cultural shift which centered around members of the lgbtqia community it was sponsored by Trey South Africa and the Hauteng Film Commission. So what was interesting about this project is you have three heterosexual women that are making a short docu-film about people that are in the LGBTQIA plus community. And so there was so much for us, especially for me, to learn and to understand. And so I just opted to produce it because I also wasn't physically in South Africa when this project was being shot. I had already left the country. So much of what I know about the LGBTQIA plus community centers around people from the States or from Europe. But I'm so curious to know what life is like for them on the continent, because I'm sure it's different. But I think politics plays a major part and how a person chooses to ex express themselves because the government has a history of suppressing people. But what I enjoyed about this film was that I was just able to learn. Listening to Debbie and your Uncle Gary talk about their experiences made me so curious about LGBTQIA plus life on the continent. And even though this film specifically centers around the South African experience, I still was like, I want to know more. There was such a positive reaction from people who watched this project because you don't really hear much about LGBTQIA life on the continent, at least on this side of the world. The whole team was just really happy that we were able to make some form of an impact. But what I enjoyed was that with Jiki Jiki, we were really able to give people a window, a peek into what life is like. We all want to be accepted, heard, seen, loved. And what I really admire about your Uncle Gary and Debbie is that they use their platforms to show themselves truthfully and authentically. They're both these beautiful artistic souls. And that is what I loved about this project was we were able to highlight and show that beauty. I hope that is what people get when they watch Jiki Jiki is they feel enlightened and they feel like they learned something, but that they too feel inspired to live authentic to themselves. <laughs> because me, the director, and the executive producer, we didn't know what angle to take it because we didn't want to speak for anyone. We didn't want to misspeak. We didn't want to say the wrong things. We did not want to execute this project in a way that did not represent who Debbie and your Uncle Gary are, who they are as people. So there was some hesitation there because we were like, we are three straight women. Yes, we might have 
friends and family members that are in that community, but we don't know what it's like to be in their shoes. And so there was this level of surrender that we each had to take. And I think it worked out well. The key was allowing them to tell their stories, allowing their words to shape the narrative of the project and not us try and manipulate what we thought it needed to be about. And all we had to do was just put it together. But honestly, if you pay attention and if you listen, your story will reveal itself to you. That's why I think Jiggy Jiggy is so special. Because I'm so into this conversation. What's it for? What's it Young Uncle Gary. I realized that. Even in safe spaces or places that we hope are safe spaces or that we assume are safe spaces, there's still so much hostility that members of that community have to deal with and live through. And it's so unjust, it's so unfair. Um, there's so much work we have to do legislatively. Because what I've learned about our societies is that if we can change the law, we can change the culture of a place. I saw it live with South Africa after the legalization of same-sex marriages in South Africa in 2003 and the way in which our society has progressed since then. So much so that we take it a little bit lightly. I didn't know before we started this journey that the community that I'm from, the East Rand, had such high instances of violence against members of the community as it did. In 2012, the, the community of Ekuruleni, where I'm from, had the highest rate of violent crimes that were committed amongst against members of the LGBTQIA community. For me, that was shocking. I think I've lived in a bubble for most of my life really interesting to me when I was in the presence of Debbie Molefe and I recall there was a specific scene that I wanted to shoot in one of the busy streets in, in the East Rand location or township area. So as we're shooting this scene, I'm now starting to realize just how much attention we're attracting. But you know, also I'm nervous for Debbie because people are catcalling, you know, it's words of encouragement. But to me, because I'm such a recluse and I'm a very private, um, just, you know, reserved person, when that was happening to her, I was so scared about like how she would feel afterwards. And immediately when we were done shooting that scene, I was like, you know, are you okay? Um, you know, how did you feel about the fact that, you know, people were um, catcalling? How did you feel about all the noise that was happening around you? And Debbie was like, eh, it was okay, you know, it's okay. Uh, she explained that, look, this is her experience, her just walking outside of her own yard people will view it as a spectacle, her experience of just being herself. Sometimes the world in which Americans find themselves in can be so consuming, not consuming, can be so open that sometimes there are certain liberties that might be taken advantage of or might be taken for granted. Um, there are so many strides that have been made since the 1970s and 80s and 90s in that movement and what we don't realize is that the strides that they were making then are strides that we're only getting into now um, as a society and as the community itself so i identify as an ally my job is to just give members of the community a place to stand and tell their stories I was wondering how would Debbie feel about 
her personal story now being um, shown to people outside of the African context. Uh, but yeah, excited and it gave me a lot more energy and, and excitement because it made me feel like I need to explore more. I need to um, go out there and shoot more. I need to be more present and just learn and just consume and but also create so it really made me excited about just in general life and the rest of 2021 and i really hope that one day our societies and the whole world really can come to a point where we don't care what someone does in the privacy of their home we can just let them you know live their lives and be happy even the idea of coming out is something that was absurd to me. I don't think anyone should feel the need to come out. Because that's their love. That's who they love. Nothing about it should be absurd. But that's me in my ideological framework, living in a perfect world. It was really interesting because she said no. I am going to maintain my energy about who I am and how I show up in the world and I'm not going to allow for people to deter that based on what their reaction is. I thought that that was really powerful because it taught me a lot about this concept of what it means to be confident and comfortable in your own skin. The one thing that keeps getting used as an excuse as to why countries have these archaic rules um, is the matter and the question of religion. And I think there's a lot of hiding and blaming and stuff that's happening, but I think it's really important to just put the image out there. Um, it's really important to just put the image out there so that people are confronted with it. And if they're unsettled, let them be unsettled, but at least they've seen it. Because the more that you see it and the more that you normalize the sight of it, the more that the subconscious might start to question why we think that such beautiful people could be anything other than love. <laughs> I'm laughing because it's absurd. <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning into today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and please leave your comments below. Let me know what your experiences are like being a part of the LGBTQIA plus community while living on the continent. And please do not forget to watch Jiki Jiki. The link for the film is in the description box below. And I will see y'all next week. As a femme, non-conforming body.